Hey everybody. I know it's been a while. I've been missing in action, but it's been, I've been busy, busy trying to make new exciting stuff for you. And lately I've been going crazy bananas in love with Teams plus Flow. So I wanted to kind of show you some things that I've done. I'm going to delete my demo channel. And I'm sorry, I'm actually going to say, okay, delete the demo channel. And then you're going to see that I have this blank channel here called drinks and it has nothing in it because I wanted to show you from scratch. There is so much you can do with flow plus teams, especially for those frontline worker scenarios. So you want to pass information to somebody on the ground. Anybody can be added as a member on teams. If you have an E3, E3, E5 license, you can add anybody to your teams, even if they're not a guest user, right? So you add whoever you want. They're on the ground, they have their phone, they have their mobile app installed on their phone. And now you wanna give them some information and allow them to interact with it. Now, you can do this with regular people too, not just frontline workers. I just love it for frontline worker scenarios. So in this particular case, we're dealing with drink, drinks, right? So I found this API and it's delivered by this group of people called the Cocktail Database. And this is kind of cool. And this is like why I love Power Apps and Flow so much. You don't need to have an existing connector for what you want to do. If the if connector doesn't exist and the thing that you want to connect to has an API, a REST API, off you go running. In most cases, if, as long as you can use Flow, you don't even need a Swagger file. You can just make an HTTP call, okay? Now, there's always going to be limitations. Each Everybody who creates an REST API scenario has the freedom to decide how you can use it. In this case, these guys are really nice. They give everybody an API key of one. And unless you're going crazy, you can basically use that um, for, your, for your own reason. And I'm using it for a demo, which means it's not gonna be used for professional reasons. It's just for a demo. But um, in that demo scenario, I chose to look up drinks. So I like to make drinks in my house. I have a little bar and sometimes I make myself a cocktail. And so I wanted to be able to have um, a scenario where I could basically look up drinks and then make them, right? So they have two um, Git posts that I, that I used here. I used um, search by ingredient name because it depends on what I have in my bar. I don't want to be excited about something I don't have. So if I don't have an ingredient, I don't want to know about what recipes. So I'm going to search by what's in my bar. And then I'm going to look up all the details, including the instructions, using this one, which will actually look up the full details by the ID, okay, which I'm going to get from the first thing. So because we have this wonderful trigger in flow that's called when a new channel message is added, now all I have to do is decide what are the words that I want to provoke this because I don't want this. I don't want people getting told about drinks every time they post anything. So I'm actually going to set up a condition so that once this triggers, it will actually look for particular words. And I've decided for today to use just the word drinks. You know, I guess if this was a real life scenario, I might do bracket drinks, close bracket. I don't know, but I wanted it to be just drinks. Now, it's important to note that you must use the message body content. And how did I know that? Is I ran the when a new message is added, and then I added like Office 365 users just so that I could run it and see what it puts out. What are the outputs? Of course, I could have looked at the doc if I clicked here and hit the I, but I don't like reading those docs personally. Um, so just running the flow and looking at the output actually teaches me more than the actual doc does. I mean, that's just how I learn. So I found out that the words that they type in the message are found in this output called message body content. Okay, so now I also added a space after the word drinks here. There's a space too, you can't see it, but it is being understood. So if they type drinks and a space, then it runs this side. If they don't, it runs this side. And 
this side has a different condition, which I'll come back to. So first I'm going to do drinks rum. And so basically I've told people, this is something I have to teach, right? Because there's nothing, or I could put something on this page that says that, but basically you type the word drinks, you put a space and then you type the kind of ingredient that you have and you send it. Now it can take a minute or so, so I'm not going to let you wait that long. I'm just going to pause the video for a minute and I'll be right back. You know what I realized after I clicked pause, I realized you might want to see it. Oh, there it is. It just popped up. So I kind of came back. Good timing, Audrey. I didn't want you to wait the whole minute or two. So I tried to pause it, but then I realized you might want to see it pop up, which it just did like after I unpaused it. So what it did was it uh, listed all the drinks that we have in that database that include rum. Now at this point, I can ask for the recipe, right? So the recipe, I have to type drinks ID, capital I, capital D, I had to remember, sorry, space, and then I type the name of the drink. Now, the only thing I haven't accounted for is that there may not be a recipe for everything so let's hope there's one for that. So then I'm gonna send that. Then I'm gonna go back to the flow and show you these conditions while we wait for the answer, okay? So on the first one, basically what I did was I knew there was two words coming out of this there's, and they're separated by a space. So I split what they typed, I split it. So I just took that body content and split it by space. So now I have a first and a last. The first being um, the prefix, just to get the flow triggered. But the second or the last is now the the um, thing that they wanted to um, look up, the ingredient they want to look up. Now, of course, I in real life, again, I would have to account for null values. What if they didn't type anything after the space? Uh-oh, now we have a null value. So I would account for that. But I'm going to keep going because I'm just having fun. Nobody's paying me to do this. And so then I'm going to make the HTTP request and I'm going to use the get request that's on that page. I'm going to use the one that is, um, I think I use this one. Yes, I use this one search by ingredient, right? And then that's in that HTTP, but as the equals or as the query string, I put the result of the compose because I only wanted the last part of it, which is what they what they asked for as far as the ingredient. So I just um, got the last of that output. And then I parsed that JSON just because um, I wanted to get every single possible de de uh, detail. So the first time you do this, you'll have to run the flow up to HTTP, then get that body and put it in the payload of parse JSON. I think most of you know how to do that. I decided later to filter. And the reason is because I was getting no values in weird places. And the reason I was getting no values in weird places, if we look at this, well, you can't see it here. I'd have to go back to the run. There were some drinks that had uh, weird symbology, like uh, spaces and, and double quotes. And those things were breaking my, my JSON format. So I decided to just say if it if it contains a space and a double quote, um, don't do anything else. So string drink drink does not contain a space and a quotation mark because for some reason that was what was in some of the data. So this was this was an example of bad data. Sometimes you have to kind of use your outputs in flow to make sure your data is good. And if it's not good, you can do some transformation you know, to get rid of anything that's not good, right? So that's a great idea. I don't complain when it comes to free data sources, right? It's free. All right, so the next thing I did after I filtered is I parsed the filter. Now, of course, I probably could have gotten away with just one parse, but in this case, I wanted to parse from the filtered result. And then I created an HTML table using my HTML table action. I only had two columns. I could have put as many columns as I want. And then I posted that into our new post a message for Teams, which is V3. V3 allows you to have HTML formatting. Yay, yippee. And it looks really nice. So um, that's how we got that first one. 
this one, right? Um, now, if it contains drinks ID, and that's, let me just, before I show that off, let me just show you that's the other side of the condition. And I do use scopes a lot just to keep everything together. It also helps me with my copy paste, right? So on this side, this is looking for drinks ID and a space, right? And then if it has a space after drinks ID, then it actually creates this beautiful adaptive card. So the adaptive card has the name of the drink, the, the category, I should replace the drink ID. Looks like something I forgot there. And then the full instructions on how to build the drink and a picture. And that's from their database as well. I didn't create that picture, it's from their database. And if I, if this is too hard for me to understand, then I added a little link that you could go and get a query string on YouTube and kind of find that drink. And of course, this drink is also somebody. So it's kind of hard when there's somebody associated to a drink. Probably if I pick something like, you know, rum something or other, let's pick Bahama Mama uh, or Barracuda. What is a common drink you see here? Some of these are like, wow, what is this? Jamaican coffee? Let's try that one. 15825. So let's do drinks ID, 15825. And I think how quickly it runs um, depends totally on your plan. I'm not 100% sure, but I notice in the Microsoft tenant, it runs faster than it runs in this tenant. But it, whatever the upgrade is, Microsoft has it, but I don't have it, right? And so, if we go back to the flow here, you can see how this one works. Again, it splits it. This time it's splitting it to get um, to get the ID number, which is gonna be the last. And that's gonna be used right here in the uh, get requests for uh, the full recipe. I equals, I don't know if that's the right one, let's see. Uh, equals yes that's it um, and then um, it's parsed filtered and the only filter I'm using here is that same don't give me any double quotes in the title of the string of the drink and then I go and I make that an HTML table and notice that my table includes the drink ID the drink the category the instructions and the thumbnail so basically everything that I want in my card I'm putting into my HTML table and then I don't even use it because it, I just did that so that I could make sure it had everything. I actually inserted that into the body of my adaptive card and I used a simple template. I think I used the template for um, the restaurant rating and so it was good enough for this um and i just plugged in the drink the thumbnail the instructions the category at the bottom excuse me the youtube query is i just put after the query string any this is a re regular youtube search i put the name of the drink but again this doesn't work so well because some of these drinks don't have drink names they kind of have people's names and so sometimes youtube will give you back the people instead so let's go back and there's our card that appeared, Jamaican coffee. And there's the instructions. And if I click on this, we might have a better chance of getting a, an actual recipe, um, Jamaican coffee. So here's one. So it's just something extra I added because their list of YouTube videos um, didn't actually always have videos, even though their data feed says they do. Um, um, but the videos are all blank. And so I figured I'd just add a query string to YouTube. So it's just really cool how you can get these things um, done. And it just, it's wonderful because now when the person on the ground who's collecting the information from this card or interacting with the buttons, they don't actually have to have access to the data at all because the data has been pulled out of where it was into the card. And so you're, you're helping them get hold of stuff. I really would, would, would suggest being careful, not, you know, and not, not um, checking all of your data to make sure it doesn't have any null values. I had to do that. I also had to check and make sure all of my data, you know, was something that could be shown to frontline worker. 
Um, but then I added them to my teams and off I went. So I just wanted to show you that I love, love, love working with teams. Um, this kind of thing is a no brainer. Just tell somebody what their code is. When they type that code, they'll get their little query. This could be from anywhere. Okay. I just decided to use drinks today. And then as a result of that query, you can set up another code that will give them something else, maybe like an adapt adaptive card or some other situation that they could use. And their clicks on these things could be opening up data in anywhere it might be. So a lot of things going on. I think at the yes, it was Inbass conference, I showed how you can deep link into an app from a card. But again, remember, if you deep link into an app, the person needs to be in your guest uh, has to be a guest in your tenant. Okay. So they have to leverage guest access to get into a power app. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I promise I'll be talking to you soon. I just want to finish up some of these surprises I'm preparing for you as I fall in love with teams plus flow. I'll be talking to you soon.